Well, hello, everybody. Something new today. So well, this is not new, but we're doing it a new way. We're going live. We usually pre-record this uh, new stop for, um, I have to say, um, I mean, I'm sorry, Monday Night Prayer, which we'll still play it again. But we want to say, hey, this is new stop with Denise Scott in London. And we want to say, hey, Denise, what's up? Over there in Hello, Georgia. everyone. Hello. How is everyone? How are you doing, Miss London? I'm doing great over here. Over here and over there and everywhere. And you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do some new stuff, a little piece of news. We're going live today. And uh, it's going to be information and maybe preventative precautions. It's also for human trafficking situations, how to handle certain scenarios. So between Denise and I, we're going to give you some tips well, put your phone away. Seriously, the only way to have a good situational awareness is to be turned into your environment or tuned into your environment. And you can't do that if you're focused on your phone. Now, when you pull into the parking lot or into that parking spot, before you kill that engine, look around. 360 degree look around in the firearms world we call this scanning okay you're looking for other people in the parking lot other people in their cars potential exits if you have to drive out you see that car didn't you just see it a second ago is it is it making several passes if so leave or wait for the car to leave. Well, get your kids straight. If you've got young kids, they need to know that the trip from the car to the store is all focused all the time. They need to be paying attention to the situation as well. Looking for cars, keeping quiet so you can focus holding your or a sibling's hand that can be taut or tough and it can be a tough thing to do at first but the more seriousness you treat it with the more they will get it now on the trip into the store scan some more you're looking for the same thing other people in the lot other people sitting in their cars cars cruising this is the point where you don't debate or car to a store point a to point b do not let someone stop you no conversations with strangers no donations no lending five dollars to the guy who's out of gas it's okay to say no not now get into the store and once you're in the store <laughs> You guessed it, scan. Make note of the employees, the, the exits, other people. It may not seem polite, but make note of people who should not be there. Are you in a children's clothing store? Is, is there guys in there with no children? Well, keep an eye on him. But at the grocery store, you can keep seeing the same person regardless of the aisle then keep an eye on them. The point is that if something makes you feel uncomfortable, trust those feelings. We all have a great ability to pick up small, subtle details with our unconscious mind or subconscious mind. And all of those small, out of the place details will make us uncomfortable or even fearful. So pay attention to your gut. Now, if someone is making you uncomfortable, you've got a few options. Bait them by doing something completely unexpected. Walk away from a full cart, put everything in your hands down, and go to the other side of the store. If the person making you feel uncomfortable follows, now you have a legitimate issue. Mm. Well, next is confrontation. Note, this should 
be done in public with plenty of other eyes. If you see a person photographing you or your child, confront them. There is no right to privacy in a lot of states. Uh, so legally, they don't need your permission to photograph you in public, even a minor. However, it's really creepy and should be called out. The last thing a predator wants is attention. So just like in nature, if everyone can see the predator for what it is, the plan is ruined. So if you have the guts, walk up and lightly, loudly ask them what they think they are doing. Now, if you don't want to confront someone but are certain they're targeting you, the last thing you want to do is to go out to the parking lot. Stay in public. Get a store manager and explain what's going on. You don't have to leave the store until you feel you are safe. They may offer to walk you to the car. Do not accept that offer. If it were me and I was certain a person was targeting me or my child, the last thing I would want is for that person to see my car and license plate. If the store manager confers the per confronts the person, explain what's been going on, and if possible, call law enforcement. Once law enforcement shows up, if the suspect is still there, you have a conversation. Tell law enforcement that you aren't comfortable walking to your vehicle by yourself, and you're uncomfortable with the suspect identifying your vehicle. Now, don't ask a stranger to escort you to your vehicle. If there is a trafficking ring, do you think they work alone? What if a stranger or strangers you ask are there for a reason? In a real situation, only accept an escort from law enforcement. Let's say the worst happens and you find yourself being attacked. Well, hopefully you're armed yourself and have taken some classes on how to deploy your firearm in a defensive situation. If you don't carry, you have to fight. You have to fight like a rabid badger and don't stop fighting until you're unconscious or the attacker has left you alone. You have to think about what, you, what to do in a scenario like this because the brain won't be able to distinguish between reality and imagination. If you've already pictured it, we all like to talk about fight or flight, but people always forget about the most common reaction, freeze. It, if you're reacting to something traumatic for the first time, you will freeze. If you're trained for a scenario on imagine what you would do, you're less likely to freeze and more likely to act. Well, these points are not meant to scare, but to get you thinking about these situations before they happen. Being prepared extremely is important in life and just reviewing these advice will make you more prepared. Please be safe out there. And I wanna say one more tip before we go a couple. Um, you know, sometimes when you're going outside and even in your own driveway, you may have some young children uh, that you say, hey, um, go, go stand by the car until I get there. Uh, then you come out. So nowadays, it's a little dangerous because you don't, we don't know who may be lurking around and about in your yard, lurking around. Uh, and in your driveway and people are sitting and wait till they see a vulnerable moment where maybe the kids are running out the house waiting to get in the car the door is not unlocked and then here you here when you come to mom or dad and that gives that person <coughs> wants to steal that child the opportunity to quickly pick that child up and run right in front of your face right from in your driveway so these scenarios is why we're reading this is little things like this is, are not so little. Um, a lot of times I see this, sometimes a parent will have three or four children, they're all young, and 
they're all walking together down the parking lot, going to the grocery store. And maybe mom has a baby in, in her hands, in her arms. That's the perfect opportunity for one of these predators to come and, and swoop up some children, yours or mine. And what I used to do with, when my children were growing up, we all held hands and we had a cute little chain. <laughs> so everybody was holding hands. I was holding their hand. And then the younger one, from the younger one to the older one, the older one was on the far side. Then the, the two younger ones were in the middle. And I was one end. We, was, we were held hands. When we, so there's little things that you can do. Because sometimes you're just not aware um, of how it's going. Just keep your eyes peeled. And you know, this scenario is not just about snatching your children. They snatch human being adults too for human trafficking sometimes say, people say I'm too old not so they might want to snatch you if you're a child a teenager a young adult and even an older adult or a senior there's predators out there that want to snatch up all ages for whatever they want to do and so Keep your eyes peeled when you walk out your door. And they call it scanning. Look around. You know, we don't have, like I said, don't be afraid. Just be aware. And also, another thing we want to talk about is when be careful of those. And listen, I've seen this. Uh, and I had some little vision about it happening to me. I was like, in it. You know, when you're in it, you're like, wow, this is real. I was in that vision, I was walking down the street and I was not. I'm from Ohio, so I, I wasn't in Ohio without. That's why I was walking in front of my house, my old house. And it was dark outside. It was one street light. And this guy rolled up on me with, in a, with a bike. Very, you know, the whole story was he didn't look bummy or anything. Or like he was selling drugs. He just looked very clean cut. Rolled up on me and he had a switchblade in his vision. And my purse, I had one of my favorite big purses is what I saw. And... I was right kind of in front of my door, but in that business, it's like I didn't get to the end to see what happened, but it was like a warning. You know, I was like, wow, I just felt all that. So I think I began to tell some people like that. Uh, I might probably was online talking, and I told somebody um, when I was working at the other radio station, and they told me, at, you know, after I had mentioned to him, they said, well, the, well, I didn't even, I don't think I even messaged him. He's past Deacon Amber. But he said, yeah, there's a lady walking down my street, down the street. And that was in Highland Park. And he said she was walking down the street coming home in the dark. And the biker came by, flew by there and robbed her. And then several of those started to occur. So just be careful. You know, we carry our purses in our bags. And, you know, uh, it's not to get too frightened when you see somebody on the bike. But just be aware and be careful. But they, they come in all shapes, all forms, all colors. Another scenario. I'm gonna talk to this this in a minute, but um, this actually happened a couple of days ago when I was visiting my niece and another state, and she, she had a little cute little one. It's my nephew, and he's just one. But we were, we went into Bath and Body. We did this, this, and that, and we went outside. Um, I guess I don't know. If she was giving me to put some bags away. Um, I think she had noticed this lady in a truck. It was a Caucasian older woman. See, this is the thing. The people that you don't expect. You say, oh, somebody is coming to pick up, pick up or do something like that. might look a certain way. But like I said, you don't know what to expect. You don't know. And she just looked like a, a much older Caucasian woman in a nice truck driving through. And she had already seen her. And so went around and then the lady drove up and she drove by her car and the stop. Now, now, mind you, two adults and a baby. Two adults and the baby. And she probably had already um, put him in his, in his seat, which would have been on the other side where she had pulled up. That's where his car seat was and that's where he was. But another thing is, if you do something like that, lock the doors. If you're kind of stuck, you know, you put your baby in, the, in, the, in his car seat or in the car, the side that you're not on, that's when a predator can come open the door and while you're trying to get to it, you know, so if you lock the door and then do what you have to do on the other side of the car because she was doing some things. So we noticed the lady one time, she said, wow, that's weird. 
So after she put it, after we saw that, you know, we kind of was getting ready to go somewhere else. But that lady drove around again. She drove all around the parking lot. She came in the direction. She just went past, and she was literally looking at us. And that's when my niece told me that she had heard about uh, this kind of thing happening where people, if you would have your children with you, uh, a predator still can come up and snatch them real quick because this, this is a big thing going on with human trafficking and children and babies. And so if you catch a mother off guard, or you, you know, come and just, they can walk up to you and say, hey, how are you doing? Just snatch the baby. So that's why I said, don't even speak to strangers. So mind you, that's the second time. Then the lady, she went back the other way. She came back around. And so she kept circling around real slow. So I just say she did it about a good four times, four or five times. And I told my, she said, I, we were going to go to, tomorrow shows and we didn't we said she said listen i think we need to go in the meantime she pulled up again and she parked just adjacent ahead of us so then of course i'm thinking okay what's up? somebody pulled up on the other side where my niece was standing by her door and but the thing was she sat in her car for a long time and she didn't get out she didn't get out and i'm like i said you know people could work together and do this as we're reading Sometimes they have other people, a team working together, attention, strange people. And so I'm just telling you the scenarios. So I know something, we knew that was something strange going on. So I'm thinking that after all this transpired, we're getting in the car and I said, okay. I said, the lady, wow, she just kept, she's gone. No, she said, no, she's not on She's sitting right over there. I'm like, wow. So that kind of was, you know, we're kind of taken back by that. So that's what inspired this this news spot. I'll oh, just be careful. Um, even you, what you do in the parking lot, you know, scan. You know, what I do notice, and what I was told even by police before, if and this is what I do now. You know, sometimes you walk past somebody, but you don't want to appear to be staring, or you drive somebody, you just like shy because you don't want to, you know, be staring. But what I learned to do, and it's not gawking. But if I pass by somebody in the car, I give I look. I don't I don't look down anymore or act like I don't want no, if I'm walking past somebody, I look right at the wrong, I look right in their face. And what I noticed about that direct eye contact many times, these people know that you you're mentally in tune and aware. So don't be shy. <laughs> we won't go but don't be shy, but those are some, some little lessons and tips. And Miss Denise. I didn't mean to care, uh, but it's important. I have a couple of tips, guys. Uh, one, please, when you're going out, especially at night, have your keys in your hand ready to use them. Get you some pepper spray and put on there. Um, I like to tell my daughters, because I have a lot of goddaughters as well as my daughter, when you're going to a club, try not to go by yourself. Go in a group. Please, please go in a group. You leave with three or four, you leave and go home with the same three or four. Don't leave your girl at the club by herself. Don't do that. Uh, another tip, if you're putting a drink down, have somebody watch it. One person go to the bathroom and come back because you never know if they're putting something in the drinks nowadays. So just be careful. Um, and again, if your gut feeling is telling you something, believe it, okay? It's telling you that for a reason. If you're feeling uncomfortable about going out, if you feel uncomfortable about you seeing somebody watching you, um, just get pay attention to your surroundings and be careful out there. Thank you. Hey, that is a great tip about the drinks because my father, when I was a young lady, a little bitty girl, and he said, well, you look like your auntie, he said, um, which was his one of his favorite sisters, and her name was Sylvia. Of course, when I got pregnant, he said, name the baby Sylvia. I, I told the story to me when I was, uh, her name was Sylvia. Uh, little, he used to talk to me all the time. Little, he did, you know, that's why you talk to your children. But he said, yeah, you were just like her. She sings, like the piano. He said she used to sing in the club. And uh, he said she was really very pretty, talented in her husband. She had a good looking husband. And he said a lot of people were jealous of her. And he said that somebody put something in her food and uh, it took her about three to six, three, four months, maybe six months before she passed away. Whatever they did mm -hmm. to her, her eyeballs turned green. So he always told me, never put your drinks down 
never eat all different kinds of foods and you don't know where it's coming from. It's a lot of things that people just can automatically do that you may not be aware of. And I'm sorry that I lost my aunt, but that stick with me. And it's, uh, when Denise brought that up, that just, uh, that's it, a chord right there. And it's important. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I was. No, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's something that people should know. That's why yeah. I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because. A lot of times people don't think about it, you know, they, and they, they go, and that's when you, if you start getting inebriated, you're at the club and you're by yourself, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. So if your girlfriend, or like you say, or your guy, have to run to the bathroom and then like, all these drinks are left on the table, excuse me, everybody, somebody should watch it. <laughs> Just like my, if we go out to eat, <laughs> and we got food on the table, go out to a, a buffet. So somebody sits at the table while we're watching everybody bring their food back. And then, you know, then maybe I'll go get my food. But so we have yeah. to have safety net. This, once again, this is new stop. But the new stop, we didn't mean to be so long, but this is long, <laughs> but it's important. <laughs> and so, Miss Denise, thank you so much for being here today. And yeah. you are uh, such a wonderful person. Thank you for being here with us. And we love you. We love you out there. We are live right yeah. now. And this is our first live with new stop. With the new Scott in London. We love you. Have a blessed day. Blessings, everyone.